Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and uh, today we're going to learn a little bit more about line segments uh, and solving algebra problems involving line segments. So let's get started. Uh, see I have here a line segment, um, and it's split into parts. So I have point A, point B, I don't know why that magically changed colors, but I'm going to go with it. Point A, point B, and point C. And so I have one big side line segment, segment AC, that's broken up into two smaller ones, AB and BC. So this next thing may seem totally obvious to you, but it's actually a really important concept. So let's just say, for example, segment AB, the measure of segment AB was two units long. Remember from before, we would then say that the measure of AB, no bar over it, is equal to two. And let's just say that BC, the measure of segment BC, was three. And I were to ask you, <laughs> sorry, there's announcements going on, what the measure of segment AC is. Well, if it's two units to go from A to B, and it's three more units to go from B to C, we can add those two things together to get five units. That's called the segment addition postulate, because you're adding the two smaller segments to get the bigger one. Whoops, I'm just going to move that down so I can write segment addition so you can write it down. It's the segment segment addition postulate. And it's just simply that when you add two segments, you can add those two segments together to get the length of the big one. So let's see what that would look like in a problem. Sorry, there's lots of announcements right now. <laughs> um, don't know if you guys can even hear that, but there's a bunch of announcements going on. Okay, so now let's take a look. So here's an example where the algebra comes in. So notice that the measure of segment AB is 2x minus 3 units and the measure of segment BC is 3x minus 12 units, and we have some extra information that the measure of segment AC is 60. So the whole thing is 60. Well, what I know from the segment addition postulate is that the measure of AB, you can even write this equation out like this first. Some people like to do this to help organize their thinking. Plus the measure of segment BC, those two added together, is going to be equal to the measure of segment AC. So what that means is AB, which is 2x minus 3, plus BC, which is 3x minus 12, must be equal to 60. And now we can solve that equation and find out the value of x and the measure of AB and BC. So solving that equation, I'll combine some like terms, and we get 5x minus 15 equals 60. Add the 15 to both sides, we get 5x equals 75. x equals um, 75 divided by 5, which is 15. So I get that x is 15. I can then go back, because notice it says, then find the measure of AB and the measure of BC. I can find that AB which is 2x minus 3, so that's, two, remember we know that x is, is 15. That's 2 times 15, which is 30. 30 minus 3 is 27. And then I can also find the measure of segment BC. 3 times 15 is 45. 45 minus 12 is 33, and I see that that is 33. Notice that that shows me that point B is not actually a midpoint. It looks like it might be in the middle, but it's not. But algebraically, I just proved that it's not a midpoint. And you're going to see that in problems coming up, so I just wanted to kind of make you aware of it. If I ask you to determine if B is the midpoint, you could do everything we just do to, did to actually calculate it, and then you would say, no, B is not the midpoint because AB is not equal to BC. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, this example is a little different, but similar in concept. Um, but here we're using the term midpoint. Midpoint means it splits the segment into two equal parts. So if B is the midpoint of AC, segment AC, B is the midpoint of segment AC, that means those two parts, AB and BC, must be equal to each other. I use the hash marks to show that those two segments are equal. It also says that B is the midpoint of segment DE. So that means that this segment and this segment are equal to each other. Now notice this time I used two hash marks instead of one, because nothing is saying that they're all equal. They might be, but they might not be. If the figure was drawn like this, you could tell they're not equal, right? But this and this could still be the same, 
in this and this could still be the same. So be real careful not to trust the diagram too much. Okay, well let's get rid of that. And now we would just simply solve those two equations. If this and this have to be the same, we could set them equal to each other and just solve those equations. So 3x plus 10 is equal to 5x plus 2. Subtract the 3x from both sides, we get 2x, and subtract the 2 from both sides, we get 8. So x is 4. And then similarly, 7y plus 4 is equal to 2y plus 14. I'm just going very quickly here, but you should, you should probably write this out and do it yourself. Maybe even pause me and do that on your own first. Hopefully you did that. Subtract the 4, you get 10, and we get that y equals 2. So that's how the term midpoint and also uh, segment addition can be used to solve problems in geometry. Thanks. See you next time.